I have a conscience, but it's a feeble, withered shred of a thing. It couldn't protect you or anyone else from a stiff breeze. You cannot even guess at the thing that I have done. Awful, evil, obscene, the telling of them alone could make you puke. They nag at me from time to time, but I tell myself I had good reasons. The years pass, the unimaginable becomes every day, the hideous becomes tedious, the unbearable becomes routine. I push it all into the dark corners of my mind, and it's incredible the room back there. Amazing what one can live with. Worms, I am Mike, and today we are talking about Before They Are Hanged, the second book in the First Law Trilogy by Joe Abercrombie. If you missed my series overview, as well as my review of the first book, The Blade itself, I will post links in here so you can check those out first. Just to reiterate, all of my book reviews will be full of spoilers. All the ones I'm reviewing, all spoilers, meaning nothing for any books that have come before right now. So I won't be telling you anything about book three or, or anything else in the series, just books one and two, there will be spoilers. Um, if you haven't read Before They Are Hanged or The Blade itself, bookmark this video and come back after you have read them. Okay, spoiler warning over, let's get into it. With The Blade itself, I was surprised at just how little traveling there was. Uh, very little adventure, I guess you'd say, for a f something that's uh, filed under the, uh, the fantasy genre. Everything seemed to be setting up characters and sticking mostly to Adwa, the capital of the Union. Uh, this, this one branches us out quite a bit. Uh, Abercrombie takes us out west to the Old Empire, up north to Angland, and down south to Dagoska. I hope I'm saying that right, Dagoska. And we also have some big events still going on in Adwa. So we're really branching out this time. We're getting the, the sense of adventure, the sense of journey that you would see in a traditional fantasy novel. Just quite a different spin. Uh, basically, we got three groups this go around. The first group, uh, led by Glockta, he has his two practicals with him, Severard and Frost. Uh, they're in Dagoska, along with Vitari. Um, I think it's Inquisitor Gorst. Is that it? I'm, there's so many names, man. Now that's Brimmer doing Gorst. I, I'm, I'm getting all the all the names mixed up here, but uh, basically, it's like a rival Inquisitor. It's like his practical, and she's there to keep an eye on him. Uh, he, he's there to find out what happened to uh, Superior Devost. And ends up spearheading an operation to kind of hold back the Gurkish from retaking the city that the Union is now a protector of. So, uh, next group he got is uh, is is Major West. He's uh, he's he's eventually meets up there with with Logan's old crew up in the north as the Union kind of begins its war with Bethod. And West has to deal with uh, you know the Crown Prince out there, Ladislaw. He's trying to be a glory hound, and he knows absolutely nothing about war or just. You know kind of how mediocre their forces really are and you know how well prepared uh Bethids are really underestimates them you know the usual uh, one of our troops is worth 10 of theirs kind of thing you know pretty much what you expect from an unexperienced guy who's just there because of who he is uh lastly we got what i'm calling is the fellowship of the seed uh this he's bias taking the group he collected uh in the first book out to the west through the old empire to find this mythical artifact known as the seed uh, Logan, Pharaoh, Jazal, Longfoot, and Kwai. They're all with him on this one. So instead of jumping all over the place for this review, I'm going to kind of go through my notes here and talk about each group and their story this go around, starting with Lakta. Uh, I was intrigued as hell about this because, unless I read it wrong, this is his first time back south since he was tortured by the Gurkish. So this is where we get to see that he's good at more than just torturing people you know he he's very good at that but he does that plenty in this don't get me wrong but you know in this he makes deals he plots he maneuvers he does whatever he needs to do uh to really to get things done to protect the city from this Gurkhas invasion but this is the first time we see him show real pity for anyone you know he says himself that he has a soft spot for crying women i mean come on guys who don't um, after he uncovers the, the conspirators in the city, you know, he lets Magister Eider go. And as long as she promises, you know, never to come back here again, he's going to tell the Arch Lector in his notes that, you know, that she'll be killed. Um, something tells me that's going to come back to get him in book three. But, you know, he saves a young girl that's a, a, a Degoskin prisoner only for it to almost bite him in the ass in this book, pun intended. You know, she's revealed to be one of these eaters that was teased in the first book with Yolwe Yo and Pharaoh. Um, turns out she killed and ate Devost. So uh, there's that. Very neat eaters are these eaters. You know, don't even leave a drop of blood. 
That's efficient. But uh, his thinking three steps ahead of everyone else, namely where Nikomo Kaska is involved, that was kind of one of my favorite moments, uh, just real Game of Thrones moment, if you will. I, mean, I hate that that's a, a verb now, but it is where it is. That's where you are, guys. Casca is an interesting character, and someone did kind of blurt out to me that you see him again in later books. So, I mean, that's 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 good to know. Uh, Koska, hey, or Casca, he helps him hold off the Gurkish invasion, and, you know, the Arch Lector eventually sends for, for Galactan and says, you know what, the city's lost. You know, come on back to Adwa. Leave them to their fate. You did what you were there, brought there to do. So, thing is, he doesn't tell the Arch Lector that, you know, he took a cool million from this Valent and Balt group, this this bank that Galacta was curious about investigating in the first book. Um, I mean, I understand he had no real options. He asked for aid, and Salt was like, hey, I'll figure it out. Uh, that's that's going to be quite a bad decision, he thinks. Uh, up north, West finally gets his uh, bigger character arc in this one. Uh, probably the biggest character arc in this book, besides Gisal, which I'll get to. But you know, he proves himself to be, you know, quite the shit in the first book with how he treats Artie. Uh, but you know, he does get some redemption here, uh, depending on how you look at it. Really, I mean, by that, I'm, I'm not saying that. Wow, what a swell guy he is for for murdering Prince Lazula! But I'm not gonna lie either and say I wasn't pumping my fist when he did it, uh, you know. Because first of all, you know, fuck rapists, but also just the guy was just a. Well, I think they keep calling him a sop in the book, and I think that's appropriate. Uh, I, I love that it basically earned him Black Dow's respect too, you know. And he gives him the nickname Furious, which kind of sticks with him the rest of the book, and I'm I'm guessing will in book three as well. Uh, it's perfect too because you know he he pushes Lazla Ladisla off that cliff, you know, for trying to rape Cathal, and then later on he's devastated when Cathal says that she can't be with them because he's too angry of a person, you know, and then she shacks up with the Dogman, which was a big surprise. Uh, but 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 West bonding with the Northmen was kind of one of my favorite parts of this one. Uh, worlds of difference, they learned to work together and in a very rewarding way. Didn't feel forced at all. You know, their section ends with a big battle with Bethard's forces and, and Fenris the Feared. He actually kills three trees. Uh, so they, they they build him up in two books now. So I got to imagine there's something big coming there and the payoff in the end. Uh, but they're able to chase him off. Three trees dies. Cathal also dies in the skirmish. You know, she took an arrow while she was cooking some eggs. And, and this is where I started to realize that no one gets to be happy for long in this series. Uh, probably the meat of this book, though, is the Fellowship of the Seed, and we get some major growth for Logan, Pharaoh, and especially Jazal this go-around. Uh, Logan and Jazal bonding is one of the most welcome and genuine parts of the story. I loved it. The whole group goes from really hating one, each other, hating one another to becoming pretty close by the end. Pharaoh accepted the exception there, but even she has a bit. But Giselle finally proves, you know, he can kick some ass with a sword, you know, but then he gets his face smashed in while he's celebrating over it. And this begins his redemption arc. And damn it, if I don't end up liking him by the end of this book. And, you know, after that first book, you didn't think there was any way, but I, I, I do. I, I, I like him, kind of root for him at this point. Uh, Logan and Farrell actually become romantically involved, if you will. I mean... They're both too stubborn to embrace it and ends up going up in flames, but it was a nice surprise. Uh, Longfoot proves himself to be the most obnoxious character in this story. He reminds me of, like, I don't know if any of you guys play games, but uh, Borderlands, there's this character called Claptrap who's just, like, over-the-top obnoxious. That's kind of what Longfoot made me think of. So I started reading the boy, reading the book with that voice in my head, and it, did, it, did, it didn't help his character any. Uh, Malika's Kwai gets really, really quiet in this book. And they always talk about like how his, his appearance just looks different. So I don't know what's going on there. If he's sick or if he knows something, that, I, I don't know what's going on with there. But he, he's he's so quiet. I almost forget he's there. This book. Uh, they finally get to where they're going and they retrieve this this seed that they're looking for. And we see why Pharaoh needed Pharaoh. I'm sorry, why Baez needed Pharaoh and Logan. You know, only Logan can talk to these spirits that are that are you know holding the seed. And only Pharaoh can touch the sea because she's a descendant of demons, apparently. You know, so congratulations, Pharaoh. Uh, it still doesn't explain why Jazal is needed to be there, but it isn't because Abercrombie just didn't know what to do with him. Uh, I, that payoff is coming in book three, but in the end, Logan, you know, Logan summons the spirit. Uh, it hands the supposed seed to Pharaoh, and it turns out just to be this useless rock. And Baez just like smashes it in frustration. Now, clearly the biggest question here is if he smashed this rock and palmed the actual seed, 
or has he really been tricked? You know, because Pharaoh grabs the seed and then, you know, Baez acts like he can't touch it and then he takes it and sees it's just nothing and smashes it. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but you definitely got the wheels turning there trying to figure out what's going on. Because I just can't see it. That whole trip was for nothing. Uh, then we're back in Adwa. Uh, Galacta gets a new case uh, to find out who has murdered the king's other son, Reynald. No heir to the throne now. Uh, the Ultralector really doesn't care about the truth. And that's the big twist, I guess, here. I mean, he hasn't really, Salt hasn't really proved himself to be a, a man of any stature at this point. But he just wants it done quickly. He doesn't care who it is. He just wants a name put to it quickly. So Galacta tortures the confession out of the Gurkish ambassador, who just came to deliver a message that the Gurkish emperor wants peace. He just wanted the Gosca back. Now they just want peace. They don't want to be left alone. Uh, but. Glockto wants to know what the hell is really going on. He starts investigating this on his own. And then a representative from Valent Balk shows up and says that his employers want him to stop digging and you don't want to mess with these people. So I expected this to come back in book three. It came back at the end of this one. Uh, so looks like that cool million is going to have him as Valent, Valent and Balk's puppet now. And I just don't see Glockta being anyone's puppet. So bad business you know especially now that the king has no living heirs and the open council gets to elect the next king so lots of political maneuvering coming up the biggest question i have going into the next book is who does salt want on the throne he's real concerned about them getting the votes about glock to help him get these votes to put something in there someone in that they, they can control uh they name some of the candidates but you don't ever see who their candidate supposedly is um, also, what is the point of Jizal being on this trip out west? You know, besides killing a couple of bandits and getting his face smashed in, what what would have changed if he wasn't there? You know, uh, Logan and Pharaoh, they make sense why he wanted them out there, but not Jizal. Lot to unpack in this concluding book. So like I always do, I'm going to name some of the characters, and I'm going to kind of go about what I did like and maybe didn't like to them in this book. <clears throat> Starting with Galacta. I'm not making any qualms here that Galacta is my favorite character in the story. I've already said I liked how resourceful he is, how he can be as a problem solver. Being able to get results without torturing someone in submission, that's a nice new wrinkle with this character this time. Uh, him showing mercy on Magister Eider was a, a nice little wrinkle. Uh, as detestable as he can seem sometimes, he always seems to be interested in finding the truth, and I dig that. So I think he will ignore these warnings from, from Valent and Balk, and he's going to try to find out who murdered Reynold. Um, I have my suspicions, but uh, not enough really to go on record with a guess. Uh, Logan, seeing him basically be a mentor a mentor to Jazal, uh, that was totally unexpected, but I loved it. Uh, serious growth for Logan in this book, uh, besides just being an oaf with a bad split personality. Uh, him and Pharaoh... They have their weird flirting ways after they screwed the first time, but it was a lot of fun. I liked it. Uh, I guess he's returning to the north now. I'm curious how he's going to take uh, to Dogman being the chief of his old crew now. Is he just going to be like, hey, cool, no big deal? Or are you just going to be happy to see him alive? I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens if he actually does meet back up with them, as I suspect that he will. Dissolve, man. Now, who... Who knew all it would take was him getting his head caved in to make me like the dude? Uh, the true brotherhood that him and Logan formed in this was just a pure joy for me. Uh, it, it makes me sad that their time together in this story might actually be over. You know, they're going to different places now. But I am curious to see if, if, if you know, a few scars on his face, if it really humbled him, or once he gets back into his element at Adjway, he's just going to fall right back into his same old dickhead of ways. I guess we'll see when, uh, when he reconnects with Artie, who, you know, he cannot stop thinking about on this trip and all of a sudden just decide you know what hey screw all this stuff who cares about titles who cares about my family i'm just gonna marry that girl so we'll see how he feels once he's back there because you know how a lot of guys will be like oh please god if this happens i'll never do this again and first opportunity you get yeah uh pharaoh i'm not really sure there was really a ton of what i call growth for her in this book uh she did let her guard down enough to have a relationship with logan uh, first, it just seemed like, hey, I got an itch, you got an itch, let's take care of this. But, uh, you know, it seems like they, they genuinely have some feelings there. But, you know, she was as stubborn and crass as ever. And do not get me wrong, I love her. <laughs> I think she's an awesome character. I just don't know what the next part of her story is. Uh, be interested to see if she sticks around with this group in the next book. 
uh, Adua, I'm guessing they're going their own separate ways. So uh, I'm curious to see which one she kind of goes with if she isn't going to go with Logan. Uh, West, I, I kind of touched on already. His move with Ladislaw was something unexpected, but very much welcome. Uh, I'm not ready to say he's completely redeemed himself from his actions in book one, but but it's a damn fine start. Uh, I do love the Furious nickname, too. That's terrific. It's perfect for him. The mentor relationship he's developed with uh, with Lord Marshall Burr is a nice one, too. Almost almost like a kind of like a father-son thing there. So that, that, that's pretty nice. Didn't expect that, to, to enjoy that relationship so much, especially with, with Polder and Croy being such cocks to each other. So it uh, feels like Burr's grooming him. Uh, instead of these these two guys that can't quit fighting with each other the whole time, uh, Dogman is such a unique POV character in the series because I feel like more than any of the other ones, he's almost like a third person character for what's happening with the rest of the Name Men crew, not just you know his point of view. But you know, seeing him happy for a bit with with Cathal, only to have it ripped away immediately, that was a dagger. Uh, and I mean, that's what Grimdark is, right? But I'm stunned that Black Dow allowed him to be the new chief. I know he said that him and Toll could just never agree, so they're going to split the difference and let uh, Dogman be his chief. I just can't see Black Dow. That guy's a loose cannon. I just can't see him taking orders from anybody. So keep an eye on there. I thought for sure he'd fight to the death for it after Three Trees went back to the mud. And, you know, hey, RIP for Three Trees. I liked him a lot. Uh, Baez, I still don't know about this cat. You know, he seems like quite the mix between Gandalf and Saruman. He seems wise, but also manipulative. Uh, besides Yulwe, it seems like everyone else from his order despises him. Uh, I'm sure that's for a reason. You know, uh, He told the story of Ptolemy, Canadius, and Kalul, and all that. But it's just one side of the story. You know, There's definitely something there, the way we see uh, Conwall. I can't remember her name talking to him. Very, very uncomfortable dinner party there. Basically, it's like if you were at the table and Dad slapped Mom and everyone's trying to just pretend that nothing happened. That's, that's how uncomfortable that reading that was. Uh, so there's definitely something there. Could their whole trip in this book be meaningless? I doubt it. So we are going to find out soon. Um, one book left in this trilogy. I'm going to be reading that next to finish this series. Uh, but then a short break. Well, not really short, uh, <laughs> as you see. Uh, after this, I'm after after uh, last argument of kings. I'm getting back to my wheel of time. It's my first time reading through uh, what I'm calling phase two. That's books five through eight here and that's not exactly short uh but then i'll be reading the first law standalone books uh besser cold the heroes and red country in advance to the sequel trilogy beginning this fall with a little hatred and that will be my first time reading those so i'm most looking forward to those so guys thank you for watching if you could please subscribe to the channel that would really help me out uh besides book reviews i also host a weekly podcast we talk about everything that the week that was in the geek in the in the week for pop culture media uh do that live right here on youtube every week you can find the podcast version on itunes stitcher google play soundcloud uh just search for geek media core c-o-r-p-s and uh, I'll, I'll link it in the description so uh thanks for watching guys and i'll see you as soon as i finish last argument in kings uh last argument of kings sorry unless i end up a body found floating by the docks take care